What's going on everybody welcome back to the channel this video we are looking at the nba DraftKings and fanduel picks for tuesday november the 21st it is thanksgiving week hope you guys are looking forward to a couple days off in a few days uh we got a five game nba slate today let's go ahead and get into it always if you enjoy the content appreciate it for the like button subscribe if you haven't already we have a very high total in the uh, pacers hawks game it's at 251 it's got to be one of the highest in the regular season that you've seen. I mean, even in postseason, um, you know, that's just a crazy high total. Probably want to get some exposure to that one. Starting off at the point guard position, I'm going with Trey Young at $9,100. He's having a pretty poor season shooting-wise, only shooting 35% from the floor. Uh, he's shooting 28% from three, so those numbers are just not good. Even in his last 10, he's struggling, but he's still averaging 46 fantasy points. You know, he's going to... At some point, go back to his normal self, and sh shots are going to start to fall. Just doesn't doesn't just normally turn into a bad player. All of a sudden, at his age, unless you're, you know, just special circumstances, but expecting to bounce back at some point. You know, you can count on him to get you a ton of assists, especially in what should be uh, by far the highest scoring game of the night at home against a Pacers team that plays fast. Neither team is great defensively, so I'm going to start with him at 9100. Looking at shooting guard, it looks like Brogdon should be back today. Uh, you have him questionable here, but I believe I saw an underdog. He's not listed on the injury report for Tuesday. We know that the Cavs are a little shorthanded. Uh, you got Levert also questionable. And we know that they are going to be missing uh, Mitchell again today. So keep an eye on uh, Levert's status for sure. If you're looking for values, I'm looking at potentially like Jalen Suggs, uh, Buddy Heald, Matherin, I like him. More than healed, but the Pacers do have a lot of other guys that play like mid 20s to high 20s in minutes, if not more, depending on who has the hot hand between healed and uh, Matherin. And you got Bruce Brown there, you got Nempard, who I think is questionable. But I'm going to skip over shooting guard. Going over to small forward, you have LeBron James, who's been playing absolutely insane basketball, has been one of the best players um, over his last five years. This season, he's having just a crazy stat line. He's shooting 50. 9% from the floor and 40% from three, which is just insane at 38 years old. Going for a little bit of a cheaper play, I think. Going Franz Wagner at 65 looks pretty good. He's pretty consistent. You know, normally you're going to get you him like 18 to 25 points, going to give you a handful of rebounds, give you some assists, and uh, coming off last game or just played 22 minutes, he's normally going to play in the mid-30s to high-30s spot against Toronto. They're pretty good defensively, but just like the price tag as a a nice mid-range play. Looking over at power forward here, you got Kevin Durant, who's also been balling. A couple of, uh, got the double OT game last time out, so he played 46 minutes, which helped him put up 72 fantasy points, but he's still been shooting really well uh, since Booker's come back. You know, teams haven't been able to just focus on slowing Durant down like they were when it was just him out there, and, he, and Booker and Beal were still out, so... Now with Booker back, teams are going to have to put some pressure on Booker and put some pressure on Durant. He's getting some um, easier looks now, and he's definitely converting on it on a higher percentage of his shots. So I think him at that price tag is definitely still a consideration. Myself, I'm going with a value piece, going with Sadiq Bey at 46, just to get to another piece in this uh, Hawks-Pacers game at home. bay has been good this season. He plays high 20s in minutes, sometimes into the 30s. Price tag is really cheap. I'm gonna get some open looks today, hopefully. Uh, and he's been knocking down his shots um, recently as well, shooting 54% from the floor and almost 30, you know, 38% from three is pretty solid. Over at center, I'm going with a mid-range play. Going John Collins, I like that he's center eligible. He's been playing center with the injury to Kessler, so he plays big minutes, mid 30s. Got extra 10 minutes last game. I uh, fouled out in that the Phoenix game, the first one. I mean, yeah, and they're first up a back, well, home and home. And now he's just been playing. He's always been in the mid-30s and minutes. His shot attempts, sometimes he'll be single digits, but normally he's going to be shooting 10-plus. He's been converting on his threes this year, 45%. It's not going to last, but he gets a lot of corner looks, and he gets you a ton of rebounds, so a lot to like at that price tag against a big Lakers team. And then last but not least, at the guard position, I'm going to throw in uh, Darius Garland just to get to a piece of the Cavs without Mitchell and most likely, well, not most likely, but with a chance that Lavert is also out, you're going to see 
definitely Garland be able to shoot as much as he wants. Looking at Mitchell's status, uh, already been ruled out. Don't know when he's coming back, but Garland in his absence just gets all the ball handling, gets you more assist opportunities, more shot attempts, and I wouldn't be surprised if he starts taking 20-plus shots at some point, especially if Levert's out again today or he's out today. Uh, but that's what I got on DraftKings. Those are our five pieces. Still leaves you with over 5K left. Uh, if you want to fill out the other three spots, let's go ahead now and look at FanDuel. All right, on FanDuel, pretty similar uh, with the picks. Uh, I got Trey Young at the point guard position. Love the price tag. 92 on FanDuel is a really good play. Uh, Garland is also fine at 83, but definitely like Trey Young. Similar price on both sites. Uh, Keontae George been starting for the Jazz, and he's been producing with the assist. He can give you double-double. Not that it's going to matter on FanDuel, but uh, he can give you over 30 minutes. Play 34, but double OT. So we'll see. They still got Sexton to back him up. Um, but normally you'll probably see high 20s in minutes, which you can expect from him. If he gets you 30 fantasy points, you'll be happy at this price tag. I think he's the same price as um, Sexton, who doesn't play as many minutes as he does. Uh, so I definitely would prefer George there. Small forward, got Franz Wagner, just like the price tag on him. Both sites in the mid-6K range. Not a ton else that looks really, really good. You know, maybe Strews if Levert's out or Jalen Johnson, but I think Wagner definitely has some upside there. Power forward going John Collins, same price on both sites. Like that matchup, just with having to play big against the Lakers team, there's definitely going to be needing him to help on the glass against LeBron and Davis, um, especially with them... Having to start him at center, we'll see what they, how they kind of work that because it'll be a tough spot. Uh, well, hopefully he stays out of foul trouble is mainly what you're going to hope for. For John Collins, he's been better recently um, than in years past. And then at center, I got Jakob Pertl because he's only 6300 bucks. He gives you a ton of upside with the blocks. He's going up against uh, Batadze, and uh, so there's going to be some room there. And if he can give you a... 10 points, 10 rebounds, and like gives you so much upside with the blocks and steals on FanDuel. It's super valuable, and I uh, can rack up fantasy points that way. So throw them in there at 63, and that's pretty much what I got today. If there are any updates, I'll post them on Twitter at the DFS process. Thank you for watching. Best of luck today, and I will catch you all next time.